10 that we read said a river flowed from Eden. So this river flowed from Eden. The Bible says that this garden was at the east of Eden. It wasn't Eden as a whole. It was just some place in Eden that the garden was. So there was a river in Eden that flowed in, uh, that flowed in Eden to Eden. There was a river that flowed into Eden. And this the first thing that comes to mind is that whenever you think of a river, the next question you should ask yourself is, where is the source? Where is the source? Where is this water coming from? Because a river must have a source. It is said that rivers is either it is coming from, they call them small tributaries. It can be streams. It could be from a stream. It could be from a spring. It could be from a lake. That is a lake that is not a standing water. You know, there are some lakes that are standing water that don't have channels of movement. But this kind of lake must have movement as in ways to move and flow. And for some other rivers, it comes from what they call glacier. So glacier is that... Um, ice, it's ice, maybe on the mountains or near poles. It is ice that is now melting slowly and it flows into the stream. So what am I trying to say that there must be a source for a river to have water. And God is saying that if you're going to enjoy or live in the overflow, you must be able to know your source. There is a source of every overflow. And for us in Christ, our source is God. So if there is no source, it means there is no flow. If there is, if the source is blocked, if they block the source where it's flowing from and channel it towards another direction, it means that that river will not receive that water anymore. So God is saying that if you're going to enjoy overflow, then that means your source must remain open and your source must be God. Why am I saying that? If you go to John chapter 10 verse 10, in TPT translation, you will see the Bible says a thief has only one thing. A thief, yes, see it. I like the, this translation. Just look at it with me. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. I have come to give you what? Everything in abundance. I am the source of all abundance. Everything you need, I can, I have come to give it to you. So, and he goes to say, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Did you notice that the word here is until? Meaning that it is still following that process of what? Steady and continuous. So I am here to give you everything in abundance more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you begin to do what? Overflow. So overflow is something that must be that steady and continuous. But there is a source. And now we are trying to look at where our own source comes from. And Jesus says, everything you need, I have it. I will give you everything in abundance. So if there is a source we cannot get wrong, if we want to enjoy overflow, our when I talk about us and God, I mean you having a good relationship, a good working relationship with God, if you're going to benefit from the source, which is God. Jeremiah 2.13 says, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the source of living water to heal out for themselves cisterns, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. I like the way message translation puts it. It says, that's Jeremiah 2.13, message translation. It says, my people have committed a compound sin, two sins. They have worked out on me the fountain of fresh flowing waters. They have worked out of me the fountain of fresh flowing waters. We are talking about overflow here. The source of this overflow, the fountain of fresh waters is God. So these people walked away from God and they're doing what? Trying to do what? Do it by themselves. And God is saying, if you must enjoy overflow, you cannot leave me out of the picture. Whether it's in your business, your career. You want money. You cannot try to get money outside of me. I am the source of your wealth. I am the source of your abundance. The Bible said in John 10, 10, TPT, everything in abundance. So whatever it is you think of I, that you want, I am the source. The problem why you have not gotten it yet is because at times you take him out of the picture. You are writing an exam. You know that God is the source of your grades and getting a good result. But you decide to do it your way by copying, by looking at, by sorting, by doing this, by doing that. What are you doing? You're trying to do what? You're doing what these people did. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. You have put me aside and you're trying to do it your own way. So, if you can acknowledge everything 
every single second, in everything you're doing that I am the source, you will enjoy overflow. You will experience overflow. And still on this matter, the last scripture I want to look at, I want us to look at John 7, 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. And on the last and final day of the feast, Jesus said, anyone who is thirsty, come and drink, for out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let's see it in message translation. John 7, 37. On the final and climatic day of the feast, Jesus took his stand. He cried out, if anyone says, let him come to me and drink. Next verse. Rivers of living water will brim and spill out of the depths of anyone who 